Hollow Knight is a masterpiece of game development on so many fronts. From the... You, you know what? No. I, I start every Hollow Knight video this way, and if you're here and you don't yet know how good Hollow Knight is, I don't think anything I say is going to change your mind. If you haven't played the game yet, go do it. If you have and you want to hear me ramble about game mechanics for some reason, boom, you've come to the right place. Today, we're talking about charms. Those fun little badges you can equip for bonus effects and gameplay changes that give Hollow Knight one of its greatest strengths. Player flexibility. Not everyone is the same, and not everyone wants to play games the same way. The charm system effectively gives you the option to make each playthrough feel different and allows players to develop a playstyle that fits their preferences. Big on melee combat and quick movement? Hollow Knight's got that. Enjoy playing it safe from far away with magic. Spellcaster builds exist! Maybe you just feel lonely because 2020 sucked and you haven't seen your friends in ages and you want to have a little Hall Knight party. Well, you can technically do that too, but it's probably not the most effective option. But that's the beauty of it. It doesn't need to be the most effective. I've tried to be as objective as possible in ranking the charms and basing their placement on every kind of playstyle and every level of familiarity with the game. Obviously, some charms are going to be more effective if you're a speedrunner or do challenge runs when compared to a blind playthrough. If you're looking for a ranking on what the objectively best charms are for completing the game at 100% efficiency, there are other YouTubers who can provide something closer to what you're looking for. What I'm going to be doing is basing this list on my personal thoughts and experiences with Hollow Knight, ranging from my blind playthrough to my experiences and challenge runs. You may not agree with my opinions, and I may be wrong about some things, but if you'd like to hear what I have to say regardless, then welcome to Technovoid's Hollow Knight Charm Ranking. This ranking won't go quite like my boss ranking did. Rather than a full set of placements, I've instead grouped charms into tiers from S, which are factually optimal, to D, charms I think are traps and should be avoided. I'll also be giving each charm a rank from 0 to 5 on their function, as in how useful their effect is, and their efficiency, as in how easily does their notch cost fit into builds. With this sort of game mechanic, I think it's a bit disingenuous to directly rank similarly useful charms against each other, just because of how unique each effect is and their variable usefulness depending on the player. So the order within a specific tier won't be relevant. The first charm I mentioned in this section isn't necessarily better or worse than the last, it more comes down to preference and the values I assign for function and efficiency. Also, Void Heart isn't going to be anywhere on the list, because it's not optional and functions less as a charm and more as a direct upgrade for story progression. All that being said, let's finally talk about some charms. To start things off, we're going to discuss the D tier charms. These are charms that I legitimately think should always or almost always be avoided, as their effects are worthless, unwanted, or simply not worth the amount of notches they cost. Dream Shield. Function, 2. Efficiency, 1. The Dream Shield can be found in a hidden room directly beneath the Seer in the resting grounds, and creates a shield that slowly rotates around the knight at the cost of 3 notches. The shield blocks most projectiles and will deal your nails damage to anything it comes in contact with, but needs to regenerate afterwards. When combined with Dream Wielder, the Dream Shield becomes 15% larger and regenerates faster. Here's the thing. There really is no situation in which Dream Shield is the best 3 notch charm for a task. It can't be controlled and doesn't even block all the projectiles in the game, so whether or not it actually does something basically comes down to pure luck and randomness most of the time. Trying to maneuver around and make its rotation useful to you will honestly end up doing more harm than good, as simply avoiding something will be easier than trying to position the shield between you and the damage. And if it does hit an enemy, the damage it does is never worth the downtime needed for a recharge. When focusing, this charm does regenerate faster and becomes slightly more effective at blocking attacks, but even then, it's just a worse and more expensive Baldur shell. The effect isn't the absolute worst in the game, but for the opportunity cost of 3 notches, the only thing you'll ever use Dream Shield for is a Markoth cosplay. Glowing Womb Function, 2 Efficiency, 1 Glowing Womb can be obtained in a hidden room accessible on the way to False Knights Arena, after obtaining the Crystal Heart and fighting your way through a gauntlet of Aspids. For two notches, it will consume eight soul every four seconds, if available, to spawn a hatchling, up to a total of four at once. These hatchlings will give you some company until you get within range of an enemy, at which point they will kamikaze themselves into the foe and deal nine damage. 
If combined with Defender's Crest, the Hatchlings will deal 5 less damage on impact but leave behind damaging Dung Clouds, and if combined with Fury of the Fallen, will increase Hatchling damage by 5 when at 1 mask. The extra damage is a nice bonus that can be activated over and over as you jump in and out of combat, getting soul with your nail hits, but is almost never the most efficient use of soul. The inability to turn the soul drain off means that healing or using spells will almost never be an option. Luckily, the soul drain will stop if you have 4 hatchlings out at once, but this will never occur in a combat situation, and even in traversal, your babies will find some excuse to smash their faces into an enemy you weren't even planning on fighting in the first place. Normally, a 2 notch cost wouldn't be too bad for the amount of damage a glowing womb can potentially offer, but the lack of flexibility in the effect means that you will almost always be locked out of using soul in a more effective way. Grimchild. Function, 1. Efficiency, 2. This 2 notch charm is first obtained from Troopmaster Grim and Dirtmyth after lighting the Nightmare Lantern in the Howling Cliffs, and upgrades several times throughout Grim's quest, reaching its full form after you defeat Nightmare King Grim. In its final form, this charm summons the Grim Child, who will fly near the knight and occasionally shoot a projectile that deals 11 damage to the first enemy it hits. For reference, this damage is equal to the midpoint between the first and second nail upgrades. On the surface, the free damage sounds pretty nice, and it can be useful when fighting extremely passively. I mean like, extremely passively. Because the damage this thing does is piddly, and it misses most of the time anyways. Seriously, the Grimchild aims like it's drunk driving two cars to a sweet 16 simultaneously. Any damage the Grimchild does will be severely dwarfed by your own as long as you show even the slightest hint of interest in combat. Ironically, the only time Grimchild ever seems to activate its 360 no-scope montage is when a boss is staggered, ending their stagger and any chance you had to reset the room or heal. At the end of the day, there are simply far better uses for two notches, as Grimchild does not do anything particularly well and often acts as a nuisance. Its damage falls off hard when using a proper combat build, it has no defensive utility, and it often attacks enemies at the least opportune moments. Seriously, do not bring this thing into Fog Canyon, your Geo will thank you. Heavy Blow. Function, 1. Efficiency, 1. There's no nice way to say this. Heavy Blow is a bad charm. While it may not be considered the absolute worst charm universally, I don't think I've ever seen a single person call this charm anything other than bad at the very best. Sly sells you Heavy Blow for 350 Geo after being rescued, and it's damn highway robbery. For the cost of two entire charm notches, this charm will increase enemy knockback from your nail by 75%, and from Great Slash by 33%. Even if this was a completely free upgrade, this is probably not something you would want to get. Most combat in the game benefits from you being able to precisely control the distance between you and your foe, and most of your DPS will generally come from close quarters combat. Spending two of your notches on a charm that forces you to chase your enemies to do damage is simply put, bad. Sure, there are a few enemies here and there that would be easier to deal with if you had more knockback. Team Cherry even tried to fix this charm in the Godmaster expansion by adding the effect to this charm that bosses with staggers will take one less hit to stagger. But even that is just not enough to justify the ridiculous price on a charm that is situationally useful once in a hundred battles. I really don't know what they were thinking with this one. King Soul. Function, 2. Efficiency, 0. King Soul is a charm you probably won't have for very long so talking about how useful it is isn't that important. It can only be obtained after defeating the Traitor Lord and speaking to the White Lady, as well as completing the White Palace. And by the time you've done that, you'll end up swapping it out for Voidheart within minutes. But maybe you want to take King Soul out for a spin before you head back down to the Abyss. Well, let me be the first to tell you. Don't bother. King Soul has a really nice passive effect. Every two seconds, you'll naturally generate four soul. That's basically two soul a second for free! All this for the low, low cost of five entire charm notches. That's a hefty price. The really unfortunate thing about King Soul is its effect is actually decent on paper. It cancels out the soul drain of Glowing Womb and can basically always ensure you'll have the soul needed to constantly heal or cast spells as long as you play safely. But the ridiculous charm cost attached to it simply makes it unwieldy for any charm build. You can easily set up a more useful effect or synergy with a 2 and a 3 notch or a 1 and a 4 notch charm combo. The math just never quite adds up properly for King Soul to fit into any good build, which is quite a shame, but it's probably for the best since you'll quickly be replacing it anyways. Spore Shroom. 
Function, one. Efficiency, three. Spore shroom can be found just past a pit of acid on the west side of the fungal wastes, just by the moss chapel and the deep nest jump scare drop. It's a rather unassuming charm by all accounts. For the price of one notch, it emits a cloud of spores after a successful focus which lasts for just over four seconds, and can do a maximum of up to 27 damage to an enemy within the cloud for the full duration. When used alongside Defender's Crest, its damage is amplified per tick and can do up to 40, and when combined with Deep Focus, increases the cloud's radius by 35%. It also gives your Shape of Un Slug little mushrooms on its back. Having the charm equipped also allows the knight to read the mushroom lore tablets found in the fungal wastes in Kingdom's Edge, and translates Mr. Mushroom's dialogue into something ever so slightly more coherent. The biggest point in Sportroom's favor is that it is super cheap. Despite the fact that I've put it in D tier, if you really like it, honestly, you should use it. The opportunity cost here is minimal. However, I still don't think it's a very useful charm. The damage it does quickly gets outscaled by everything else in a proper build, and most of the time you're only going to get a fraction of the full damage, as most foes that require you to spend some time focusing are not going to get into the range much at all. Pretty much every boss in the game has a good opportunity to heal, but in most of these scenarios the safe spot is either going to be too far away from them for the cloud to matter, or they'll be quickly zooming around the screen fast enough that they'll only take a few ticks of damage. Sportroom is also not super useful during boss staggers. Either you're too far away and the damage is wasted, or you're close enough to end their stagger and don't get the full recharge time. Sportroom isn't distinctly bad, but it just has few two use cases for me to not recommend you spend that notch on a better cheap charm or to make room for a more expensive and powerful one. Sprint Master. Function, 1. Efficiency, 2. Sly's inventory will increase once you find his lost key in the Crystal Peak. But unfortunately, much like with Heavy Blow, he's still selling trash. For 400 Geo and 1 Charm Notch, Sprint Master will increase your base running speed by 20% and up to 37% if equipped alongside Dash Master. Another notable synergy that I'll be going into more depth on later is the Weaver Sun Charm, which makes your Weaver babies jump farther and move 50% faster. On the surface, Sprint Master seems like a perfectly reasonable one-notch charm for getting around the map quicker, but this falls apart pretty quick when you make note of two things. First off, it only increases your speed when you're touching the ground, so any jumping or falling you do will slow you back down to regular speed. Secondly, by the time you have access to this charm, you are no doubt dashing everywhere anyways. The actual speed increase this charm gives you might as well be negligible given the amount of time a player spends casually sauntering from point A to point B. The extra speed might also make you walk straight into a damage hitbox in combat if you aren't used to the increased movement, so it really doesn't offer much benefit at all. The charm might be cheap, sure, but given how infrequently the effect is active during standard play, I can't even really recommend it for traversal. Seriously, just use your dash instead. It's quick, it's easy, and it's free. Moving into the C tier charms, I'm choosing to define these charms as those that have perfectly good use scenarios, but are either outclassed by other charms or are simply too niche to have equipped in most situations. This is the biggest tier, and it's probably got some charms you like using in it. And that's great, but they probably shouldn't be staying on your build the entire game, and there's more than likely going to be a better option out there. Boulder Shell. Function, 3. Efficiency, 2. The first charm in this tier can be found in the Howling Cliffs, past a couple of Elder Baldurs. The charm costs two notches and creates a little shield around you during your focus. If you get hit out of your focus, you'll lose the soul and won't heal, but you also won't take any damage. It can block up to four hits, after which it will break. However, sitting at a bench will fully repair it from any amount of damage that it has taken. Baldur Shell works alongside Thorn's Vagony, activating the thorns even when damage isn't taken, as well as Shape of Un, providing you with the boulder shield even when moving around. You also get a cute little shell. This charm is actually pretty good in my opinion. Despite the fact that it can be one of the only charms in the game to become completely useless if it takes too much damage, the effect it provides is really strong when used correctly. That's the big question though. How do you use it correctly? Trying to heal aggressively with this charm is just, frankly, a bad idea. You're losing soul, Baldur Shell loses health, it's a lose-lose overall. However, I think beginner players can still use Baldur's Shell to get a better understanding of where the safe healing opportunities in a fight are, if used sparingly. As long as you don't become over-reliant on the effect and continue to play safely, the shell offers great backup to the occasional slightly mistimed or misjudged opportunity. 
It can also be used to preserve some health with a well-timed focus against bosses that deal more than one mask of damage, essentially increasing the amount of health you have by a large margin for the cost of a bit of soul. When it comes down to it though, Baldur's Shell use cases are pretty niche overall and there are just better ways to spend two notches. The charm is definitely worth considering, but accept that one day, you'll grow out of your shell. Deep Focus Function 3 Efficiency 1 Deep Focus can be obtained at the end of a long Crystal Dash laser hallway in the Crystal Peaks. For a whopping 4 notches, it decreases focus speed by 65% in return for healing 2 masks for the price of 1. This charm can be really good in platforming challenges and other situations that don't involve quick movement, as it saves you 50% of the soul you'd otherwise be using. As mentioned earlier, it also increases Sports Room's damage radius, and when combined with Quick Focus, gives you all the soul efficiency while cancelling out the extra focus time. That being said, that combination costs a ridiculous 7 notches, so bringing that effect to a boss battle means you won't be bringing much else. The main problem with Deep Focus is that, on top of being so expensive that it can't fit into many builds, it also has the extended heal downside that makes it impossible to use in combat. This charm is going to be a big help during a White Palace run, but otherwise, the downsides are just too hefty for it to be usable anywhere else. Defender's Crest Function 1 Efficiency 3 After defeating the Dung Defender in the Royal Waterways, you'll be rewarded with a new friend and a new charm, the Defender's Crest. Unfortunately, this charm's effect is not particularly useful. For one notch, it creates a small aura of ripe smells that surround the knight, dealing 1 damage per tick to anything standing in it. The cloud sticks around for 2.2 seconds and recenters every 0.2 seconds, essentially allowing you to create a small fart trail. Despite the hilarity of it all, the low damage and range of this charm makes it all but worthless as an actual damage option, with the exception of 1 health adds, like the infected balloons. In the Broken Vessel fights, this charm is absolutely amazing, since it completely removes the danger of balloons chasing you since they'll die before reaching your hitbox. That's pretty much where the usefulness ends though. Beyond that, Defender's Crest synergizes with Spore Shroom, increasing the overall damage of the cloud, Fluke Nest by replacing your flukes with a fat exploding fluke that leaves behind a damaging gas cloud, and Glowing Womb by turning your hatchlings into explodey boys that also leave behind a damage over time cloud. If damage over time is your thing, Defender's Crest is a great, if not particularly effective, low cost option. However, one of the best effects this charm has is that NPCs will react to your heroic smell to the point where Leg Eater will give you discounts and Tuck will give you a free rancid egg. Lem on the other hand is less of a fan and will refuse to do business with you until you take a shower. Overall, Defender's Crest probably has a D tier effect, but the low cost makes it easily slottable into a bunch of builds and it interacts with several other charms in unique ways, which raises its worth in my opinion. It's also very funny, so you know, bonus points. Love a well designed fart joke. Fragile and Unbreakable Greed Function 3 Efficiency 2 The first of the fragile charms, Greed is also undoubtedly the least useful. Sold by Leg Eater in the Fungal Waste for 250 Geo, Fragile Greed will make enemies drop between 20% and 100% more Geo, with each Geo type, 1, 5, and 25, being increased by 20%, rounded up for 2 notches. Like the other fragile charms, Greed will break if the knight dies, and can only be fixed by returning to Leg Eater and paying a repair fee of 150 Geo. While the price of repair is pretty reasonable, you'll often find the biggest annoyance to be the trek back to his room, which is pretty far out of the way. However, if the knight has the Defender's Crest on, Leg Eater's selling and repair costs fall down to 200 and 120 Geo respectively. This charm can certainly be useful in the early portions of the game where Geo isn't super plentiful and you're trying to buy everything the game has to offer but soon falls off in usefulness. The fragile aspect of this charm can be somewhat annoying, but won't affect steel soul runs, where this charm can be legitimately useful as you try and power up quickly. After the Grim Troop has arrived in Dirtmouth, Fragile Greed can be given to Divine, and she'll return it at the cost of 9000 Geo as Unbreakable Greed, which is slightly less annoying to wear. I feel this charm is somewhat slept on honestly. The bonus to money making is especially effective alongside Gathering Swarm, and can really speed up the process of powering up in the early and mid game no matter how many times you've played through, despite having zero use in boss fights. This charm's one fatal flaw of course, is that Geo eventually stops being useful. At which point, the charm stops being useful. Grubberfly's Elegy Function 3 Efficiency 1 
Grubberfly's elegy is obtained very late into the game, only given to you by the Grubfather after scouring all of Halloness and freeing all 46 Grubs. For 3 notches, it will make your nail shoot a projectile that deals 50% of your nail's damage on hit, sort of like the Sword Beam from the Zelda series. While this may seem like a pretty sweet deal, this charm comes with a few restrictions that hold it back. First of all, the beam only activates when the knight is at full HP, making this charm a dead 3 slots when not at full health. Getting back to full health isn't too hard with lots of soul. But unfortunately, the nail beams also do not provide soul. You still need to hit enemies in melee range to get any. This makes the charm a lot more trouble than it's worth a lot of the time, when better options exist that don't stop working if you ever get hit. Charms that affect your nail's damage or speed synergize with Elegy as you might expect, and Mark of Pride and Heavy Blow also affect the beams by making them larger and have greater knockback respectively. The Lifeblood charms, Joni's Blessing excluded, give you a few free hits before Elegy deactivates, since it doesn't count Lifeblood masks as part of the health bar, and Hive Blood can also be used to regenerate the effect if you only get hit once. However, Hive Blood does not work alongside Joni's Blessing for this effect. Perhaps the two most important synergies this charm has, however, are with Grub Song and Fury of the Fallen. Elegy will make Grub Song increase the amount of soul gained when taking damage by 10, up to 25, a pretty substantial difference. Fury of the Fallen, on the other hand, will make Elegy reactivate when at one mask, dealing 75% of your nail's damage. Elegy certainly has its niche uses with these charms, and can also be a real lifesaver in Radiant Battles, where a single hit means death anyways but as a general rule, the hefty cost and harsh restrictions on this charm's activation make it hard to recommend without a specific plan in mind. Hiveblood. Function, 3. Efficiency, 1. Speaking of cool charms that are way too expensive, let's talk about Hiveblood. Obtained in the Hive after defeating the Hive Knight, Hiveblood will regenerate your most recently lost mask after 12 seconds, for 4 charm notches. Given how obscenely expensive the charm is, and the fact that it will only ever recover the most recently lost mask rather than a full regen effect, makes it too large a burden for most situations. Keep in mind that taking damage before the regeneration completes will also reset the timer, making this a bad charm to use if you're getting overwhelmed. However, Hiveblood has a really great use in platforming challenges like the White Palace and Path of Pain, where finding soul isn't always easy. With enough patience between platforming attempts, Hiveblood makes you effectively invincible during these segments, which prevents the need for a lot of painful backtracking. When combined with Joni's Blessing, Hiveblood takes twice as long, a full 24 seconds, to regenerate a mask. Otherwise, its main synergies come from Carefree Melody and Balder Shell, which can prevent damage from interrupting the regen, and Grub Song, which can turn a patient player into an infinite soul generator. Overall, this charm's excessive cost and limited use in battle makes it not worth taking over other options in 95% of situations. But in those one or two scenarios where the player can take their time after each hit and want to conserve their soul, High Flood is king. Joni's Blessing Function 2 Efficiency 2 Joni's Blessing is a charm that many first-time players will absolutely love. It can be obtained rather early on in your adventure if you're a thorough explorer, at Blue Child Joni's Plinth in the Howling Cliffs. At the cost of 4 notches, it makes life seeds flock to the knight instead of running away, and increases the knight's number of masks by 40%, with the downside of making them all lifeblood masks, which prevents the player from healing whatsoever. The blessing will take into account your base masks as well as those granted by the heart charm, turning the normal max of 11 masks into a whopping 16. Not only does this charm provide a meaty health boost, but the inability to focus effectively allows players to concentrate their soul use on offensive spells. For folks who haven't quite gotten used to the focus mechanic, and those who love casting spells alike, Joni's Blessing ends up being a great, if restrictively expensive, charm. Joni's Blessing does also have a synergy with Hive Blood, as mentioned in the last section, but the effect is frankly never worth the whopping 8 notch cost. Spoilers, but Lifeblood Core ends up being more efficient overall, which makes the Blessing's cost and healing restrictions less justifiable in the late game. Lifeblood Heart Function 2 Efficiency 2 Straight into the second lifeblood charm, we've got the heart. This charm can be accessed extremely early, at Salubra's shop in the crossroads for 250 geo, and provides two lifeblood masks every time you sit at a bench for two notches. While this effect is rather mediocre and strictly less efficient than lifeblood core, the ability to grab it right at the start of the game gives it a niche for players before they find the other lifeblood charms. 
Unlike Joni's Blessing, Lifeblood Heart also benefits from stacking on top of regular masks, which means Grubberfly's Elegy stays active longer, as that charm doesn't consider the Lifeblood masks from Heart and Core in its condition. Overall, Lifeblood Heart is a rather cheap and useful charm in the early game, but outlives its usefulness quickly, as other charms focused on keeping the knight alive via lifeblood, healing, or regeneration all are more effective. Stalwart Shell Function, 2. Efficiency, 2. Stalwart Shell is a 2-notch charm which can be bought from Sly for 200 Geo. It increases the number of invincibility frames the knight gets when hit from 1.3 seconds to 1.75 seconds, and reduces the recoil from being hit from 0.2 seconds to 0.08 seconds. When combined with Thorns of Agony, the Thorns activate faster and have a faster animation to give the knight a few extra iframes after the Thorns recede. There is honestly not much to say about this charm. It sounds pretty good in theory, as it's cheap, available early, and looks effective in combat situations. The reality of the matter though is that the 1.3 seconds of invincibility you get normally is already enough to reposition yourself in any fight. The extra 0.45 seconds Stalwart Shell gives is only useful if you're trying to face tank and damage boost through an enemy health bar. This kind of strategy can be effective in some of the game's fights, but more often than not, this won't work in Hollow Knight. The charm isn't entirely useless, but you'll usually want to spend those two notches just improving your offense or defensive capabilities instead of on a scuffed damage boost build. Thorns of Agony Function 1 Efficiency 3 Thorns of Agony is a one-notch charm that can be found in Green Path as soon as the Mothwing Cloak is acquired. When the player takes damage, thorns sprout from the knight's body and damage any surrounding enemies for your nail's damage. Unfortunately, this animation does take up all of your iframes, but if used alongside Stalwart Shell, the animation is a bit quicker and the player does have a few extra frames to get back in position. This is, by most accounts, a bad charm. More often than not, the iframes can be used much more effectively to reposition or deal more damage than thorns will, and this charm is arguably never used at a high level of play. However, I don't believe it deserves to be a D tier. Despite its flaws, Thorns is actually a useful charm for new players. It is extremely cheap, fitting into almost any build, and prevents players still unfamiliar with the combat from getting overwhelmed by large groups of enemies. As time goes on, you will start seeing opportunities in combat to use iframes effectively, or just learn to avoid damage entirely, at which point you'll absolutely want to drop this charm. But until then, the extra damage and knockback helps give new players a bit more breathing room after making a mistake, so I'd argue it has its place. Wayward Compass Function 2 Efficiency 3 I should get this out of the way first. We all know that Wayward Compass is the strongest charm in the game by far, and not having it on at all times is trolling. But that aside, let's talk about its actual use cases. Hollow Knight is a difficult game, and Team Cherry often forgoes accessibility settings in favor of building the experience that matches their vision perfectly. This driving force extends to all aspects of the game, even its map. Unlike many games in the same genre, Hollow Knight doesn't hand anything location related to you on a silver platter. You need to find a map maker to even purchase a map of an area, and buy a quill that lets you actually fill them in. And if you wanted to actually see where you were on that map, well, that'll be 220 Geo to a Zelda and a charm notch for the Wayward Compass. Realistically, I think Compass has a very similar role in the game to a charm like Thorns of Agony. It's a training wheel that is very accessible and cheap, but will eventually come off in favor of more useful charms. But that doesn't make it bad by any stretch of the imagination. For a new or directionally challenged player still unfamiliar with Halonest, seeing the knight's location on the map is legitimately crucial gameplay, and the charm's accessibility and low strain on charm builds makes it an easy pill to swallow. The charm's functionality might only be a quality of life improvement, but it's a damn important one. Once you do end up learning the paths around Halonest by heart, this charm can be safely unequipped and never be used again unless you're styling and memeing on some pantheons. But the incredible utility it offers until you've reached an understanding of the kingdom's tunnels makes it a solid early to mid game option. Weaver Song Function 2 Efficiency 2 At this point in the list, I've sort of already made a point about how ineffective summon builds are. The effects of charms like Grimchild, Dream Shield, and Glowing Womb are just hardly ever worth the opportunity cost and the downsides those charms offer. But here's one summon charm you should consider, Weaver Song. Obtainable in the Weaver's Den and Deep Nest, this two-notch charm summons three little weaverlings that run around the night and deal three damage per hit. By itself, this charm sucks, being just as bad if not worse than the other summoning charms. 
but Weaver Sung has two synergies that boost its effectiveness far beyond any other summon charm. When equipped with Grub Song, the knight will also obtain three soul every time a Weaverling damages an enemy, even if that enemy would not normally give soul on nail hit. When equipped alongside Sprint Master, the Weaverlings move 50% faster and jump further, making them much more effective and aggressive. Whether you choose to only synergize with Grub Song for a 3 notch cost, or go for the full 4 notch build, these synergies make the Weaverlings an impressively effective soul generation machine that King Soul wishes it could be. When adding on the additional speed and aggression from Sprint Master, the Weavers can make soul management much easier during boss fights or survival marathons, and make cheesing certain battles possible. It's definitely not the best build out there, and should usually be dropped for something more consistently effective in the game's hardest scenarios. But if you're looking for the best summon build charms can offer, this is it right here. And with that, let's get into the B tier. These are going to be your average picks. While nothing here is game breaking or even outstanding on a regular basis, these are charms you can safely equip and be confident will offer you the value you're looking for. Some of the charms in this tier have incredible applications in certain scenarios, but aren't a must pick a decent amount of the time. Carefree Melody Function, 3. Efficiency, 2. Carefree Melody is a charm that a lot of folks are probably not too familiar with, and that's understandable. The only way to get this charm is to banish the Grim Troop instead of fighting the Nightmare King, and then speaking to Nim and Dirtmouth. This charm replaces Grimchild on this route and costs 3 notches instead of 2. However, it is arguably much more useful. Every time the knight takes damage with this charm equipped, they gain a 10% to 20% chance to block the damage of the next hit, starting at 10% after 1 hit and capping at 90% after 7 hits. After blocking damage, the counter goes back down to 0. On average, this charm activates 22.4% of the time, giving you roughly 1 extra hit for every 4 masks, or 2 additional hits on a 9 mask build. But this, my friends, is only the beginning. While 2 extra, I'll beat random masks for 3 notches sounds like a worse deal than Lifeblood or Unbreakable Heart, this charm offers way more than it might seem. Every time you heal, this charm gains efficiency, since the effect never goes away. When combined with charms that improve survivability like Quick Focus, Balder Shell, or Hive Blood, Melody gives you yet another opportunity to make your masks even more efficient. And that's not even getting into attacks that deal extra damage. If you're fighting a boss that deals 2 masks of damage per hit, or a boss's ascended version, these 3 notches are giving you some amazing bang for your buck on survivability. Since the stacks don't reset on death or switching rooms, this charm can even be used in Radiant Battles for a Get Out of Jail for 3 Notches card. At the end of the day, the charm still relies on chance and the law of large numbers. And of course, avoiding damage entirely is obviously going to be the better option. But if you're a fan of builds that synergize with healing and give you more leeway on mistakes, you could do worse than Carefree Melody. Dash Master Function 3 Efficiency 3 People love to dash, and that's a fact. And Dash Master, well, it lets you do just that. Found beneath the statue of the Dash Master himself near the Mantis Village, this two notch charm reduces the Mothwing Cloak cooldown by 0.2 seconds down to 0.4 seconds, and also allows the player to dash downwards when needed. While the second effect isn't extremely useful, it has its place, and Dash Master's cooldown reduction on Schmovent makes it a favorite of many. The charm's usefulness is admittedly hard to quantify, as extra dashing only tangentially helps with combat, making the charm primarily just used for getting around faster. But it does have some synergies. Combined with Sprint Master, your basic movement bonus increases to 37% from 20. Much more importantly is the synergy with Sharp Shadow, which increases damage dealt with the Shade Cloak to 1.5 times your nail's damage. This can be a nice boost in certain fights where Sharp Shadow is already a strong option. Overall, Dash Master is hard to recommend over objectively more useful combat charms, but it serves its purpose perfectly well at a rather reasonable asking price. And who doesn't love more shmovability? Dreamwielder Function 2 Efficiency 4 Dreamwielder is a one-notch charm that is given by the Seer as a reward for collecting 500 essence, and it has three separate effects, two of which are useful. For starters, it doubles soul gained by using the Dream Nail from 33 to 66, allowing two spell casts or focuses from a single use. It also heavily reduces the animation time of the Dream Nail down from 2.4 seconds to 0.9 seconds. Its third effect is that it doubles the chance of getting a free essence when killing an enemy. 
When combined with Dream Shield, the Dream Shield is 15% larger and regenerates faster. Overall, Dream Wielder is a really good charm, but it's also a really weird charm in terms of the primary audience. First time players will probably not be using the Dream Nail too much. It can feel clunky and it takes getting used to. However, by the time you've delved into the game enough to really get an appreciation for the mechanic, you're probably late enough in the game that there are better and faster ways to obtain soul. This leaves the charm in a bit of a strange spot, where it's best used in the mid-game, but will often only be used by experienced players. The charm can be very good at managing soul in situations where it might otherwise be hard to get some of the stuff, but takes some dedication to use effectively. Due to this, its ability to be obtained early and slotted onto almost any build is usually going to be abused by veterans coming back to the game for a new playthrough, whether that be a challenge run, steal soul, or something similar. That being said, if you are still new to the game, I encourage trying this one out early and getting a feel for it, as it can be nice against some of the game's bigger roadblocks like the Trial of the Fool. Fluke Nest Function 3 Efficiency 2 how much use you're going to get out of Fluke Nest really depends on what patch you're playing the game on. Fluke Nest has ranged from being a terrible charm to an amazing one, but is currently in a pretty mediocre spot overall. It is obtained after killing the Fluke Marm in the Royal Waterways, and replaces Vengeful Spirit with a Shotgun Blast of 9 Flukes, and Shade Soul with 16 Flukes. Each Fluke deals 4 damage, for 36 total from Vengeful Spirit, and 64 from Shade Soul. It currently costs 3 charm notches, but save files created before the lifeblood update will still have it costing 2. As one might expect, Fluke Nest is boosted by Shaman Stone, with each Fluke being larger and dealing 5 damage for 45 or 80 total, depending on the version of the spell. Fluke Nest also synergizes with Defender's Crest, shooting out one giant Fluke that deals 3 damage and explodes, dealing 1 damage per tick for 23 ticks. Shaman Stone increases the rate of ticks, allowing for 29 total. On the surface, Fluke Nest may seem pretty good, as it can double the damage of your fireball spell. However, this is only true when every single fluke hits the enemy, which will only happen at close range, which can feel antithetical to the point of the spell. If you're fighting an enemy with a large hitbox, Fluke Nest becomes useless, as you are able to hit the enemy with your spell twice, which doubles the damage without costing 3 notches. The current cost is certainly a tough pill to swallow. All that being said though, proper use of Flukeness can melt through health bars in a way little else can, even after the nerfs. Please though, don't use the Defender's Crest version, it's not good, I beg of you. Fury of the Fallen Function 3 Efficiency 2 Fury of the Fallen can be obtained immediately upon starting your adventure in the King's Pass, and increases all nail damage by 75% when at one mask for the price of two charm notches, as well as the price of constantly being at death's door. Fury of the Fallen synergizes with Glowing Womb, making hatchlings deal 5 extra damage when at 1 HP, as well as Strength, which stacks the damage buff to 162.5%. Perhaps most notably, Fury has a unique interaction with Grubberfly's Elegy. While one of Elegy's biggest downsides is that it only works at full health, when equipped alongside Fury, it reactivates when at one mask to fire projectiles that deal 75% of the nail's damage. Gaining lifeblood in the state will cancel out Elegy's effect, but not Fury's. Fury is... a weird charm to recommend. While the damage it offers cannot be understated, and can be really useful in speedruns or battles that let you get to low health really quickly, it's still not something I would say is worth using in most scenarios. Charms that only work under certain conditions are always a tricky balancing act, because even when they're strong, the notch cost on them is often too high for an effect that is not going to be active during a large part of your playthrough. For regular play, I don't recommend Fury at all. You're better off trying to keep your masks full and slashing away normally than trying to benefit from the attack boost, at which point a single misstep will send you back to the bench. Luckily, as far as conditional charms go, Fury is on the cheaper side, and since you get it so early, there's no good reason to not have it on while you're waiting to pick up more consistent options. But moving into the mid and end game, if you want to keep using this charm, you'll really need to build and plan around it for it to be effective. Gathering Swarm Function 3 Efficiency 4 Gathering Swarm can be bought from Sly for 300 Geo and automatically collects stray money on the map for one charm notch. It's a simple charm, but a very effective one. Swarm fits into the same category as Wayward Compass, as a charm that offers a lot of convenience for a low cost for most of the game, but eventually becomes pointless. 
However, while Compass realistically becomes entirely pointless for every playthrough after you've learned the map, Swarm stays relevant on every playthrough, since you're starting from zero geo each time. The effect of the charm might not be the most necessary. If you naturally dash around for geo anyways, or know the locations of all the geo deposits, chests, and relics, you aren't really going to need this charm. But all those pennies that fall into the acid or spikes in the early game can really rack up, and when you're hard pressed for cash at the beginning of every playthrough, it doesn't make sense to not wear this charm. There aren't all that many extremely valuable charms available in the early game, so Swarm acts as an equip and forget quality of life improvement that you'll eventually replace when it's no longer needed, but it makes those early purchases a lot more bearable. Fragile and Unbreakable Heart Function 3 Efficiency 3 The second of the fragile charms is Heart, a very solid, simple, and useful charm. Purchased from Leg Eater in the Fungal Waste for 350 Geo, or 280 with the Defender's Crest, this charm offers two masks for two notches, a very solid deal. Of course, as a fragile charm, it will break on death and takes 200 geo, or 160 with the crest, for Leg Eater to repair. When given to Divine, she will return Unbreakable Heart to you for the cost of 1200 geo. There's not really much to say about this charm. What you see, is what you get. The main comparisons to make here are against Lifeblood Heart and Carefree Melody. Lifeblood Heart is an objectively worse charm as lifeblood masks can't be healed, and it costs the same number of notches. Of course, the lifeblood charms aren't fragile, but this really only affects exploration prior to paying divine, as steel soul runs and the tough dream bosses won't break this charm anyways. Carefree Melody, as mentioned in its section, is a bit tougher of a comparison. While Carefree Melody costs an extra notch, it does offer potentially higher dividends in drawn out fights. Then again, there's nothing to say you can't run both, and Heart offers a really solid low cost option for survivability that will always be useful, even if you have to occasionally visit Leg Eater for repairs. Lifeblood Core Function 2 Efficiency 4 You might be able to tell at this point, but I'm not a huge Lifeblood fan. I think the temporary masks are nice and let you focus on spell casting, but there's no question that regular masks are strictly better and more versatile. With how many solid health options Hollow Knight already offers, it's tough to recommend the Lifeblood versions. But Lifeblood Core makes a good case for itself. Core provides 4 Lifeblood masks for the cost of 3 notches, making it the most efficient notch to mask ratio available. While regular masks are always preferred, if you just need a buffer on your health bar, Core is a good option. It is pretty expensive, making it hard to slot onto a build as an afterthought, but if you do have the space, it pays for itself. The worst part about this charm is how late you're likely going to get it. This charm is only available beyond the lifeblood door in the abyss, which requires reaching it with 14 lifeblood hearts at once, or 15 if you've got Joni's Blessing equipped. Since the abyss is a late game area and getting that many lifeblood masks without all the mask shards is cumbersome, most folks won't be seeing this one until the endgame. While it certainly still has its uses in the endgame, it's the kind of charm that would be much better if it was available any earlier. Sharp Shadow Function 3 Efficiency 3 Some people might rant at me for this placement, and I'll accept that. I know that many folks dislike Sharp Shadow with a passion, but I just can't lie. I'm addicted to it. Sharp Shadow can be obtained at the end of a Shade Cloak puzzle in Southeastern Deep Nest, and increases the length of your Shade Dash by 39% and makes it deal your nails damage when passing through an enemy. Notably, when Shade Cloak is on cooldown, Sharp Shadow will not increase the length of your regular dashes, which can be a bit cumbersome when trying to plan out your movement strategy during a fight, and legitimately makes some platforming challenges much harder. For two notches, the effect seems pretty fair. You're essentially turning a movement ability into a combat ability, which can be absolutely pivotal in some of Hollow Knight's most brutal battles. But on a normal day, it's just okay. Unfortunately, Sharp Shadow does not generate soul on hit, but when combined with Dash Master, the damage becomes 1.5 times your nail's damage, which is a nice boost. It's hard for me to not place this higher, as Sharp Shadow is probably one of my favorite charms in the game. It's fun to use, and it can be a cornerstone strategy to taking down the likes of Nightmare King Grim or Pure Vessel, among others. But putting my feelings aside and looking at it objectively, there are a lot of times you would not want this charm equipped, and there are some really other good two-notch charms vying for the same spot in your build. Sharp Shadow offers unique value to a combat build, but if you don't like it, there are other two-notch charms that are more consistently useful. Soul Eater Function 4 Efficiency 2 
Soul Eater is hidden at the end of the catacombs below the resting grounds, behind several breakable walls. This charm has an incredible effect, giving you 8 additional soul on nail hit, taking you from 11 per hit to 19. For reference, casting spells and healing cost 33 soul naturally, meaning this charm can make your nail to spell ratio much better. The catch though is Soul Eater's oppressive cost. At 4 notches, this charm becomes incredibly difficult to fit into any reasonable build without giving up the effect of another option, one which will usually be more helpful. There are certain scenarios in which Soul Eater shines, such as Radiant Battles and God Home where Overcharming allows you to slot in this incredible effect for a single notch. But otherwise, you're going to be hard pressed to find scenarios in which Soul Eater is going to give you better value than a combination of 1, 2, and 3 notch charms. However, if you can find a place for it where the opportunity cost can be swallowed, you'll be astounded to see how good that much soul per hit can be. Steady Body Function 3 Efficiency 3 This one, I'm gonna get yelled at in the comments. I already know. Steady Body is a really unique charm in that people either love it or hate it. So by not putting it in the S or D tier, I've now invoked the wrath of both parties. But let me explain. Steady Body is a one-notch charm that completely removes the knight's knockback when they hit an enemy, and can be purchased for 120 Geo in Salubra's shop in the crossroads. Hollow Knight's knockback mechanic takes some getting used to, so a lot of folks will see this charm early on for super cheap and equip it, and then they have trouble taking it off when they want the notch for something else. By using this charm, you are preventing yourself from learning one of the game's basic mechanics, and shooting yourself in the foot as you'll forever have one less charm notch until you can get used to playing with knockback again. This is a huge detriment to first playthroughs and in my opinion why I think this charm is absolutely bottom tier for newer players. That being said, it's not all bad. Steady Body does have its use in high level play, and oh boy what a use it is. The lack of recoil on this charm can greatly increase the DPS of a skilled player by improving your ability to stick to enemies as well as reducing the amount of gymnastics you need to perform to stay in safe zones. For players who understand this game in and out and are trying to optimize combat, this charm offers an insane amount of value for a single notch. This charm's effect may seem small, but it actually changes combat mechanics significantly. And that's why I'm putting it here, in the average tier. I agree with both sides of the argument. I seriously don't think new players should be using Steady Body. It acts as a crutch and prevents them from learning the game's most basic mechanics, and requires a huge amount of relearning combat movement if you want to take it off. But for a player who does know how to confidently approach combat with and without it, this charm can seriously improve performance at the highest tiers of play. And thus, I'm dubbing it situational. I really think it only has an important place on charm builds looking to perfect combat pathing. Moving on into the A tier, we're hitting on some really solid and versatile options. These charms are not all going to be the best in their respective categories, but the flexibility they offer makes them consistently useful charms throughout your adventure that you'll never regret having on a build. Grub Song Function 3 Efficiency 5 Starting out the A tier is Grub Song, a charm you'll find rather early on if you're thorough in your exploration. The Grub Father gives you this charm after you've freed 10 grubs, which can be pretty feasibly done in your first visit to Green Path if you're looking for secrets. For but a single notch, this charm gives the knight 15 soul whenever it takes damage. When combined with Grubberfly's Elegy, this number is increased to a whopping 25, and when combined with Weaver Song, gives your Weaverlings the very strong passive of giving you 3 soul each time they damage an enemy. I am admittedly not the biggest fan of charms that require you to screw up in some way from benefiting from them but Grub Song is so cheap and powerful that I can't deny its use. Alongside its utility and platforming challenges like the White Palace, Grub Song's powerful soul regeneration is actually so good that people purposely take damage in the pantheons just to gather soul for future battles. Of course, that's not even mentioning how cheap it is. With only a single notch required, this charm has absolutely no problem fitting into basically any build, and is always worth considering. While it may not provide much value to a player who is good at avoiding damage, its low cost and powerful utility mean that even when you aren't getting hit, you won't regret having it equipped. Long Nail Function 3 Efficiency 3 I started this video by saying that charms offer the player a variety of different playstyles to battle their way through Halonest. And while I stand by that, the truth of the matter is that no matter how you play, using your nail is gonna be important. 
Whether it's your primary damage source, just a way to get more soul for spells and healing, or even just a platforming tool, the nail is a central gameplay mechanic. Hollow Knight is also not a very forgiving game. Every second in pixel count here. So when a charm exists that lets your nail slashes be more forgiving, yeah, it's gonna be good. Long Nail can be bought from Salubra in the Forgotten Crossroads for 300 Geo, and increases your nail range by 15% for the cost of two notches. 15% isn't a huge change, but it is noticeable, especially given how early it can be obtained. When a new player is still trying to figure out all the enemy patterns, that extra range will mean the difference between losing and not losing a mask. As the game goes on, the price becomes a bit harder to swallow though. While two notches is still pretty cheap, there are a lot of really good charms that you can get at the same price in the later portions of the game, and Long Nail ends up being completely outclassed value-wise by Mark of Pride, which is available relatively early as well. When Long Nail and Mark of Pride are combined, they do stack to give you 40% extra range, but the difference between Mark of Pride and the combination is usually not worth an entire 5 notches. Long Nail is still a really useful charm and can be equipped in many scenarios where you're just looking for a bit of extra range, and it's very powerful in the early game, especially for inexperienced players. It does get somewhat outclassed later in the game, but there still aren't any scenarios in which Long Nail is a bad thing to have, if you can spare the notches. Nail Master's Glory Function 3 Efficiency 5 Nail Master's Glory is obtained rather late in your adventure, and is received from Sly after having learned all three of the nail arts. For the cost of one notch, it reduces the charge up time of nail arts by 0.6 seconds, from 1.35 to 0.75. This is a really nice effect. While it isn't always useful, there are a large number of bosses and combat challenges in which nail arts are extremely effective. One of the biggest downsides of the arts is their charge times. Every millisecond helps when you're trying to strike within a specific window, or in the case of the Colosseum, being able to keep hordes of enemies under control. I seriously recommend this charm if you're struggling with the Trial of the Fool. Nail arts can feel wonky at first, but once you get the hang of them, they really help with that challenge, and glory just makes them more effective. Of course, since nail arts are somewhat limited in their use cases, this charm isn't always going to be the best option. Or rather, it wouldn't be, if it wasn't one notch. But as it stands, this is a great cherry on top charm, as you can throw it on basically whatever build you like without regret. Of course, if you choose to equip it, please remember to actually use the arts, otherwise it's just an empty slot. Quick Focus Function 5 Efficiency 3 When it comes to survivability, few charms can hold a candle to Quick Focus. This charm can be purchased from Salubra for 800 Geo, and costs 3 notches to make focusing 33% faster. While not as cheap and splashable into sets as the other charms in this category, Quick Focus offers a serious gameplay change that can't be understated. Not only does this charm allow you to double heal in many scenarios where only one would otherwise be possible, but it opens up a huge wealth of healing opportunities that are straight up impossible without it. When it comes to healing charms, Quick Focus is about as good as it gets. Given how expensive it is and how many notches it costs, Quick Focus can be a bit hard to obtain and equip in the early game, but it really starts to shine in the mid game and never stops being good after that. While it is perfectly serviceable on its own, Quick Focus also works wonders when used alongside other charms focused on keeping HP up, like Grub Song, Shape of Oon, Soul Catcher, and Carefree Melody. Speaking of Shape of Oon, using these two charms in tandem doubles Shape of Oon's movement speed to 12. For comparison, the knight's normal movement speed is 8.3, and even the combination of Dash and Sprint Master only goes up to 11.4. This is one seriously speedy snail. Deep Focus also synergizes with Quick Focus, almost cancelling out Deep Focus's penalty, allowing you to heal two masks at regular speed. Unfortunately, this strategy can be hard to use at a prohibitively expensive 7 notch cost. The big drawback to this charm is its notch cost. While a lot of builds will have exactly one or two notches free, very few builds are able to operate around quick focus without it being a cornerstone of the set. But if you're getting hit frequently during a tough battle, this charm offers some of the best mid-fight endurance you could ask for. Shape of Oon Function 4 Efficiency 4 Shape of Oon is the last charm on this list that is primarily used for healing purposes. 
One potential problem with healing builds is that they do, by definition, only function if you're taking damage. As one gets better at the game and learns the intricacies of Hollow Knight's battles, this becomes less and less of an issue, and offensive charms usually become the ideal loadout. But the power of healing builds should not be understated, and Shape of Un is one of the best charms to illustrate that. This charm can be obtained at the bottom of the Lake of Un after obtaining Isma's Tear, and turns the knight into a little slug that can move around while focusing for the cost of two notches. This snail has a much smaller hitbox than the knight, and the ability to move while healing opens up many opportunities in the same way that Quick Focus does. When combined with Quick Focus, Shape of Un moves twice as fast, and wearing Balder Shell and Sports Room gives the Shape of Un a fun visual distinction. It's not literally a charm synergy, but it's cute. One of the charm's biggest benefits, as you've probably come to expect by this point, is that it is only two notches and can fit into a good variety of builds. But Shape of Un differentiates itself from many of the other focus charms by giving focus a use besides healing. The knight's smaller hitbox and speed make the slug a viable way to dodge attacks, which is more reliable and lasts longer than something like Baldur's Shell, once you get used to it. If you've been playing Hall Knight for a while, getting started with Shape of Un can be tough. You've ingrained into your muscle memory that trying to heal makes you a sitting duck. But you don't have to be. If you can break the habit of sitting still, and start finding those sweet, otherwise unusable moments of hesitation in a boss's rhythm, you'll start lasting much longer, and will hopefully gain an appreciation for this underappreciated gem. Soul Catcher Function, 3 Efficiency, 4 I've already talked your ear off about how versatility and low-cost charms are great because they can work in a wide variety of playstyles throughout the game. And that's more true of Soul Catcher than most charms. This charm is available as early as obtaining Vengeful Spirit and defeating the Elder Balder in the Ancestral Mound. In fact, if you're playing the game blind, it might be the first or second charm you find. But this charm will continue to be useful to you throughout your adventure. For two notches, you get three additional soul each time you hit an enemy, going from 11 to 14. This is a rather minor change, and pales in comparison to Soul Eater's whopping 8 soul per hit. But while Soul Eater may literally be more notch efficient on paper, in practice a 2 notch charm has much more use than a 4 notch charm. Soul Catcher benefits from its inherent ability to synergize with most of the best charms in the game, while still being able to fit on a build with them. Because let's face it, who doesn't want more soul? When combined with something like Quick Slash or Steady Body, the difference in soul gain as compared to Soul Eater isn't as relevant, because you'll be generating so much anyways. Combining it with spell upgrades like Shaman Stone and Spell Twister gives you more opportunities to hang back safely while taking down tough customers. Healing charms like Quick Focus and Shape of Un also appreciate every little bit of extra soul they can get their hands on. Getting down to brass tacks, Soul Catcher will likely never be the perfect charm for the job. Its effect on its own is too weak to base a playstyle around. But as a supplemental charm that enhances a build on the cheap, Soul Catcher will always pull its weight. Now we are at the S tier. The best of the best. These charms have solidified themselves at a high level of play as being the most effective tactics available. Whether you're just starting your Hollow Knight journey, or are heading off on your next hitless P5 speedrun, these charms have proven themselves to be worth their weight many times over in the trial of fire that is the critically minded and analytic Hollow Knight community. Mark of Pride. Function, 4. Efficiency, 4. As previously mentioned, Longnail is a very useful charm in the early game due to just how important nail range is in Hollow Knight. Mark of Pride, then, might as well just be a straight upgrade to it, so you know it's good. Obtainable in the Mantis Village Treasure Room after beating the Mantis Lords, Mark of Pride is a 3-notch charm that increases nail range by 25%. It may be 1 notch more expensive than Longnail, but the effect boost is massive in comparison. While Longnail may be giving you a couple extra pixels of wiggle room, Mark of Pride's extra range is blatant to see. When combined with Grubberfly's Elegy, it increases the size of your projectiles, and when combined with Longnail, gives you a total range increase to 40%. Whether you're engaging in melee combat, platforming, or just trying to get a little extra soul, Mark of Pride makes basically any action more forgiving. This charm doesn't fit onto every build, but it can be used to great effect no matter what else you're running making it a solid core of any playstyle. It's a bit on the expensive side, but the price is worth it for a charm that provides its full value every time you hit the attack button. Quick Slash Function, 5 Efficiency, 4 
Whether Quick Slash is objectively the best charm in the game is up to some debate. But one thing is for certain, it might very well be the fan favorite. This charm is located in the Kingdom's Edge, after passing through the tunnels in the bottom right of the map. For three notches, it decreases the slash hitbox duration from 0.35 seconds to 0.28 seconds, and decreases the cooldown between slashes from 0.41 seconds to 0.25 seconds. If you can land every hit at max speed, that's roughly a 65% increase in damage, just slightly worse than Fury of the Fallen 75%, which, in case you forgot, only works at one mask. Combine that with the fact that nail builds are very common, especially for folks just playing through the game normally, and the trigger-happy positive feedback loop a faster attack speed provides, it's no wonder why such a large part of the fanbase considers this the best charm. In addition to that, the amount of soul you generate per hit is not based on how much damage you do, but rather how many times you strike, making Quick Slash one of the best soul generation charms in the game as well. This charm really does do everything. It isn't perfect though. On enemies that get knocked back, the increased speed of knockback will prevent you from optimizing your damage without steady body. It also suffers in fights with limited windows of damage opportunities, where the burst damage from a nail art or a spell might be more effective. It's also a pretty expensive charm, and while it will be worth it a large portion of the time, there are a few other charms that work better on builds that don't require constant offensive pressure. These are all nitpicks though, and if you're ever thinking that Quick Slash is a good idea for you, Odds are that you're correct. If you happen to be playing on a save file that was created before the 1.0.1.1 update, Quick Slash will only cost two charm notches. And if that isn't a deal that interests you, I'm not sure what will. Shaman Stone. Function, five. Efficiency, four. It's kind of crazy how little value the game seems to give Shaman Stone. Salubra sells this charm in the Forgotten Crossroads for only 220 Geo, making her tonight's biggest loser, because this charm is a goddamn menace. The three notch cost may scare new players away, as they'll probably only have three or four notches total when they find it. But you can't put a price on damage this good. Shaman Stone increases the damage of Vengeful Spirit and Shade Soul by 33%, Desolate Dive by 51%, Descending Dark by 47%, and Howling Wraith slash Abyss Shriek by 50%. It also increases the size and hitbox of every spell. Needless to say, if you want to use spells, this is your charm. While Shaman Stone is just as expensive as most of the other top tier charms, it has a leg up on the nail based charms in that there's very few charms a spell build actually requires, meaning that these three notches can act as judge, jury, and executioner whereas most other types of builds are going to require multiple charms working together for maximum profit. Shaman Stone certainly synergizes alongside soul generation charms and spell twister, but even without those, it doesn't lose out on much. This charm's biggest downside is that it does require spell use. For a lot of players, they're just more comfortable using the nail, and if you're a fan of healing, you're going to lose a good bit of value here. But the speedrunners don't lie. The additional burst you get with this charm becomes an absolute necessity on winning many boss fights before they even begin. If you're still getting used to the game and aren't super comfortable using spells, I recommend giving this stone a shot, as it will really sell how good spells are. And if you're already very familiar with the game, you probably already know why this one's famous. Spell Twister Function, 4 Efficiency, 5 I know I just talked about how Shaman Stone is the only charm a spell build really needs, and that's true, but there are a lot of people who sleep on Spell Twister. Let me just say this off the bat, while this ranking isn't ordered within tier, I can confidently say that Spell Twister is not as good as Shaman Stone, so if you need to just choose one, drop this. But if you've got the slots, dude, this one's great! Found in a secret room at the top of the Soul Sanctum, this bad boy reduces the cost of casting spells from 33 soul to 24 for only 2 notches, making it the cheapest charm in the S tier. Now, if you're mathematically minded, you may be thinking, Soul Catcher, another 2 notch charm, provides 14 soul per hit for spells that cost 33 to cast. Meanwhile, Spell Twister provides 11 soul on hit for spells that cost 24 soul to cast. Mathematically, Soul Catcher is slightly better, especially when you consider that the soul you get can also be used for healing, which doesn't get a price cut with Twister. What pushes Soul Twister above and beyond is actually quite simple. 
it's the ability to cast 4 spells instead of 3 per gauge. Once you've maxed out on soul, as you often will, soul generation charms lose their effect. But no matter how much soul you've got, a discount on spells never goes away. If you're starting a fight out with a maxed gauge, the extra cast at the beginning of a fight increases your damage by 33%, and much like Carefree Melody pays for itself in the long term, so does Spell Twister. As a fight goes on longer and you keep getting soul, the increased uptime of your spells puts a significant dent in HP pools the way other soul generation charms just can't. Granted, if you stay away from spells in general or spend a lot of it on healing, this may not be the best option for you. But given its price, I recommend giving it a shot. It may surprise you. Fragile and Unbreakable Strength Function, 5. Efficiency, 5. So, how is a 3-notch charm getting a 5 on the efficiency scale? The simple answer is nail damage is the most reliable thing in the game. It doesn't depend on how often you can get in melee range, or how much soul you have, or how fast you can tap a button. You hit once, you get more damage. That's strength. With very few exceptions, hitting things with your nail is one of the most critical pieces of Hollow Knight combat. It's how you deal damage, and how you get the resource for healing and more damage. Fragile Strength is sold by Leg Eater for 600 Geo or 480 with the Defender Crest. If you die, it breaks, and will cost 350, or 280 with the Crest, to repair at his bench. Divine will turn it into Unbreakable Strength for 1500 Geo, making it the most expensive thing in the game. No matter which version you're using, this charm gives you a flat 50% boost to nail damage. No health thresholds or DPS requirements needed. What you see is what you get. And what you get is a no strings attached damage buff that just keeps getting better each time you upgrade your nail. Saying this charm should be a core part of your build in the late game probably goes without saying, but honestly it's worth it even in the middle of a regular playthrough. The charm is available early, and while Unbreakable Strength is no doubt an endgame charm, Fragile Strength is very much worth the risk of dying with it equipped. Of course, on your first playthrough, many of your biggest challenges will be dream fights, in which these charms don't break anyways. So pretty much regardless of how you play, these are three notches that you should basically always have reserved. And with that, we're done. Every charm in Hall Knight ranked. Will Silk Song come out at some point? Hopefully. Will there be more rankings on tools and whatnot? No doubt. Will they take forever for me to make? Better believe it! All jokes aside, this list may not match exactly with what you have in mind, but bar a couple of opinionated placements, I think this is a pretty unbiased and objective look at which charms are best. Of course, as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below, and i greatly appreciate it if you like, and subscribe, and all that fun stuff. Also, I just wanted to say. I know a huge portion of my sub base is here for primarily Hollow Knight content, which is something I don't deliver as often as I'd like. To you, I do want to apologize for how long the wait is between these. Hollow Knight is my favorite game, and I feel the need to tackle each topic I cover in regard to the game as thoroughly and as best as I can. Given how little time I have for content creation in general, a lot of the time that means I simply don't have the bandwidth to give these grander videos the attention they need to get through the pipeline. But I promise, there is more to come, and I will do my best to make your sub worth your while. Even though I am unable to release these videos as often as other creators, I promise you that I put my all into each and every one of them. If you like what you see, then rest assured, I always strive to be consistent with video quality. Either way, thank you so much for supporting me, and I hope to see you on the next one whenever that may be. Goodbye.